This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 2, Solving Systems by Elimination. Our objectives for this lecture are to understand the elimination method for solving systems of linear equations, and to consider the triangular shape of a system, which is the primary goal of this elimination process. The usual method that you might know for solving systems of equations is the substitution method. To use this method, we solve one of our equations for one of our variables, and then substitute this solution into the other equations, and then repeat this process as necessary until we have a value for that variable. Once we have that single value, we can go back and substitute into our equations that we got before to eventually figure out the values of all the variables. To see this method in action, let's consider an example. Let's look at the system where we have two equations and two variables. First equation is x plus 2y equals 10, and the second equation is 0.5x minus 3y equals negative 11. So our process here would be to pick one of our equations and to pick one of our variables and solve that equation for that variable. The easiest way to go would be to solve the first equation for x, although we have other options, but this would be the easiest possible solution. That gives us x equals 10 minus 2y, and then we substitute that into our second equation, that gives us 0.5 times the quantity 10 minus 2y minus 3y equals negative 11. We simplify all of that and we eventually get y equals 4. Finally, we take that value y equals 4, substitute it back into our equation for x, and get x equals 2. So our solution is x equals 2 and y equals 4, which we could also write as the ordered pair 2 comma 4. But once we have a more complicated example like this, where we have three equations and three variables, the substitution method becomes much more difficult. And you could imagine with even more equations and more variables, we eventually would not want to use the substitution method at all. So a new method is really required to try to handle these larger systems. And that new method is the elimination method. So what is the elimination method? Well, in the elimination method, we're going to scale equations by multiplying both sides by an appropriate number. Then we add those scaled equations together to eliminate variables, to get variables to cancel out. And then we continue eliminating variables until only one variable remains. And then similar to the substitution method, we take those values and substitute them back into our prior equations to eventually get a value for each variable. Let's take a look at the same system that we considered before, and this time use the elimination method. Again, we have multiple options, but our first step could be to multiply the first equation by negative 0.5. And what I mean by that is to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 0.5. That gives us a brand new equation, negative 0.5x minus y equals negative 5. And now, if we add together the original second equation and this new equation, the x's will cancel out, and we'll get negative 4y equals negative 16. We can divide both sides of that equation by negative 4, or equivalently, multiply both sides by negative 1 fourth to eventually get y equals 4. Finally, we go back and compute the value of x, which is x equals 2. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise to us. We already solved this system of equations, and we already found the solution was x equals 2 and y equals 4 but this illustrates this new method that we're going to be using for the rest of this course. Now, one drawback of the elimination method is that every time we take a step, we create a brand new equation, and eventually we have a large number of equations, and it's hard to keep track of what we're doing. So to manage that, we're going to focus on replacing equations by the result of doing one of these operations. Now, if we replace an equation, we want to make sure that we would be able to recover the original equation that we replaced. That means that our operations must be reversible so that we haven't lost any information that would be contained in the equations that we have replaced. There are going to be three main elimination operations that we're going to use. We're going to scale an equation by multiplying both sides by a non-zero constant. It has to be a non-zero constant because, again, this operation needs to be reversible. If we multiply both sides of an equation by zero, we would not be able to recover the original equation. But if we multiply by any non-zero number, then we could again multiply by the reciprocal of that number and then get back to the original equation. We can also replace an equation by the sum of itself and a multiple of another equation. And that's reversible because we could replace that equation by the sum of itself and the negative of the multiple of that other equation. And that would get us back to the equation that we had before. And finally, we could swap the positions of two equations. We're not going to see much swapping until later on in a future lecture, but that is going to be one of our operations that we have available. Now let's take a look one more time at this system of equations and see what this looks like with these new elimination operations. Our first step is going to be to replace equation 2 by equation 2 plus negative 0.5 times equation number 1. This is similar to the first two steps that we took the previous time that we did this system, but now we're reimagining it as a replacement operation rather than creating multiple additional equations. 
So we get the system x plus 2y equals 10, that's the original first equation, and we've replaced the second equation with negative 4y equals negative 16. Now we proceed like we did before. We're going to scale equation number 2 by a factor of negative 1 fourth. We're always going to think of scaling as multiplying both sides by a number. That gives us y equals 4. And then as we did before, we can then go back and find the value of x to figure out once again the solution is x equals 2, y equals 4. But the real advantage of the elimination method is that it lets us more methodically handle larger systems of equations like this one that we rejected applying the substitution method to earlier. So how do we approach this using elimination method? Well, our initial goal is to eliminate all of the occurrences of x1 in the second and third equations. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with replacement operations. We're going to replace equation 2 by equation 2 plus negative 3 times equation 1. Notice that if we multiply both sides of equation 1 by negative 3, that gives us a negative 3x1. That's going to be able to cancel out with the positive 3x1 that we have in the second equation so that the resulting equation will no longer have any x1s in it. And we can see the work here where our new second equation is going to be the equation 2x2 minus 5x3 equals 4. So our new system of equations has the original equation 1, the original equation 3, a new replaced equation 2. But we still need to replace the third equation to get rid of the x1 in that one. What would we have to multiply by our first equation so that when we add the result to the third equation, the x1s would go away? Well, it shouldn't be too hard to see that if we multiply that first equation on both sides by 4, and then add the result to the third equation, the x1s will again cancel out and we'll get a new third equation that doesn't have any x1s in it. So now we have a new system of equations. We still have the original first equation, but we have new replaced second and third equations that no longer have x1 in them. Now what? Well, now we need to eliminate the x2s from the third equation. We're eventually going to try to find a value of x3 so that we can take that value of x3, go back, figure out x2, and go back and figure out x1. So how do we eliminate the x2 from the third equation? Well, we're looking for a number that we can multiply by the second equation so that when we add the result to the third equation, we won't have any x2s anymore. So we can see that if we multiply the second equation by 3 and add the result to the third equation, that will eliminate the x2s. Now, as it turns out, when we do this, it also unexpectedly eliminates the x3s. So the system that we end up with has a new third equation that looks like 0 equals 3, but since we know that 0 doesn't equal 3, that means that this system of equations has no solutions. But that wasn't really obvious until we started eliminating equations and working through the process of eliminating these variables and simplifying our equations. So in this case, we end up with a result that we have no solutions to the system of equations. Now, what we've done has a lot of writing in it. We're writing equations at each step and writing a lot of these variables. But really, all we need to keep track of our operations is the coefficients from each equation. So for this reason, we use what we call augmented matrix form. We take the coefficients and the right-hand side numbers of each equation and write them in what we call a matrix. So we have square brackets surrounding this grid of numbers, where each row, each horizontal row of this matrix, represents an equation, and each column represents the coefficients of that particular variable, or the final column which represents the numbers on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So the equation operations that we've been using can be rephrased as row operations. So rather than multiplying both sides of an equation by a non-zero constant, we can multiply all of the entries in a row by a non-zero constant. Instead of replacing an equation by the sum of itself and a multiple of another equation, we'll replace a row by the sum of itself and a multiple of another row. Or we can swap the positions of two rows. And again, for now, we're not going to see too much swapping, but we will see that a little later on. All right, so let's try this one more time. Let's use our row operations to find the solution of the system of equations that corresponds to this augmented matrix. Now remember, the numbers in this rectangular grid represent coefficients of an equation. So for example, the first row of this matrix has the entries 1, negative 3, 0, 5. That means that that row represents the equation 1x1 minus 3x2 plus 0x3 equals 5, and so on. So this represents a system of equations, and we want to use our operations to follow the similar process that we did before to ultimately find the solution of this system of equations. So as before, our initial goal is to eliminate all occurrences of x1 from every equation except the first equation. Now, the third equation already doesn't have any x1s in it because we've got a 0 in that bottom left-hand corner. 
but we have a negative one that I've highlighted here that we do need to eliminate. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're always going to eliminate variables using replacement operations. We're going to replace row two by the sum of itself and a multiple of another row. Well, the only real other option that we have for another row here is row one. And we don't need to multiply row one by anything to get the elimination to happen. So we're just going to add row one to row two to get the new row two. For our scratch work, it's a lot easier to do this because all we're doing is adding numbers together and we get a new row of zero, negative two, five, seven. So that becomes the new second row of our matrix. And the first column looks good. We've only got a single x1 in our first equation and no x1s in our second and third equations. So our new goal is to eliminate the x2s from the third equation. Ultimately, what we want is a third equation that just has x3 in it so that we can figure out what the value of x3 is. So again, we're going to use a replacement operation. We're going to multiply row 2 by some value so that when we add the results to row 3, that highlighted 1 there will turn into a 0. This means that we're going to need to multiply row 2 by 1 half and then add the results to row 3. Now remember, we're not actually scaling row 2. We're not actually multiplying row 2 by 1 half. We're just temporarily doing that and then immediately adding the result to row 3. When we work that out, we get a new row 3, which is 0, 0, 7 halves, 7 halves. And now we've achieved our goal. Now we have a third row, a third equation, that only has x3s in it. So now we're done with our row operations, and we're ready to start figuring out what the values of these variables are. And now we need to interpret these rows as equations. So that third row represents the equation 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 7 halves x3 equals 7 halves which in simpler form is just 7 halves x3 equals 7 halves. That gives us the solution x3 equals 1. And now we work backwards. We look at the second row, which represents the equation negative 2x2 plus 5x3 equals 7. But we know x3 equals 1, so we can substitute that value in. And that gives us that x2 equals negative 1. And then finally, we go back to the first row, which, as we said before, represents the equation x1 minus 3x2 equals 5. And substituting the value of x2 that we know, gives us x1 equals 2. And so that gives us the solution, 2, negative 1, 1. Now we're going to spend some more time in a future lecture going over this process of elimination and how we decide which operations to use at each step, but this should give you a good idea of where we're going and how we're going to be solving these system of equations in the future. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.